Hello there, it's Simone, and it's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's no, it's actually not my birthday. Birthday when I film this, but I plan on sharing this on my birthday. So I purchased a birthday pen during what was that Black Friday? I think, uh, which was not the plan, but. Um, that's why I am on currently on a no spend because I already purchased the fountain pen that I was going to purchase in the month of January and February. That's the plan. I am going to um, every other month I will allow myself the budget for one fountain pen. And so, huh, yeah, uh, this has been sitting in my uh, closet for two months now and I think it's time to show it to you and to do some size comparisons, ink it up and test it out. Um, I went with a Benu. The reason why is because I saw Carrie from Pens and Tea rave about Benu fountain pens for the longest time and she says they have some of the smoothest, most amazing nibs uh, and that's why she got over her um, prejudice. <laughs> and I, I did too. So this definitely is not a super sparkly pen. I know that Benu has a lot of more outrageous, very out there, super shiny, very sparkly fountain pens in their lineup. And I have looked at them long enough to actually like some of the more out there models as well. But when I saw this specific model, I knew that this was going to be my very first uh, Benu from, or very first uh, pen from Benu. I really, really love this uh, deep blue color with these turquoisey sparkles inside and then these uh, other sparkles here. Um, they, they reflect the light differently. Sometimes it's more pink, sometimes it's more green, sometimes it's just gold. I, I was just so drawn to this that I decided, you know, just because you have gotten used to the sparkliness and out there-ness of the Benu pens doesn't mean that you have to go all out if you really like this pen. It was actually between this and the Talisman Mandrake. I think that's the name of that one. And I decided to go with this one. I got this at a really good price for um, Black Friday at Atlas Stationers. And yeah, I've been waiting to be able to ink this for a long time. The interesting thing about this pen is that if I'm not mistaken from looking at the uh, images online, the sections of all of their pens, most of their pens are exactly identical. The only thing that's different is the shape of the fountain pen. Um, oh, that's interesting. I thought this was part of the section, but it's actually not. It comes with a converter. It looks like a standard international converter. The nib is a Schmidt nib. It's nicely uh, decorated right here with swirls. And the size that I went with is fine. Before I ink it up and test the nib, I I actually have to admit something. I already tested the nib and then I rinsed it because I was not going to keep a fountain pen uninked in my stash that I had never tried before. That's when I got it and then I just tested it. But uh, yeah, Psst, don't tell anyone. So this pen is huge and just how huge it is. Let's pull out some pens that I have in my stash. This is a Lamy Safari. No, this is not a Lamy Safari. This is a Lamy All-Star. Uh, it's the same size as the Lamy Safari. This is a Twispy Eco. This is the VAC 700R from Twisby. 
even shorter than this. This is a custom 74. And then I want to do this it, this way. No, this is definitely the best comparison. This one doesn't even go to the clip. It's like <laughs> giant versus toddler or something. It's so cute. Um, let's uncap those all and see what the length compares to um, in when they are the sections are aligned doesn't make such a huge difference however I feel like the this pen looks super long because of the uh, assumed section length for this pen that's definitely something that you need to get used to and I know that most sections are black I have seen several since I purchased mine where the section wasn't black but those are mostly uh, store exclusives for other stores the ones that are just like regular Benu models um, that you can't get through like I saw one for gourmet pens that looked like a unicorn that had a different colored section there is one on Trophée, is that the name? Um, that had the same colors as the design of the pen section. And I think the um, cookie crumble something, the, the cookie dough, the three exclusive pens for Goulet pens are also different colored sections. But I wanted this one. So I am going to live with the, the black section. The the pen doesn't stand out as much when the cap is removed and I'm comparing them just by aligning the sections up here. Um yeah. So that's that's that. Let's let's see what it looks like compared to the Coeco. Same size. <laughs> that's the funniest thing to me for real. Um, so I think that this pen is super long. It lays really nicely in my hand. I would never let, well, let's, posting feels like I am hurting something on the inside of the cap and like I'm going to, um, fray. That's probably not the, the right uh, word for this but I as if I'm going to break something it doesn't look like it's meant to be posted and it it becomes extremely unwieldy if I do and I'm sorry for the color on the screen it looks a lot nicer in person uh, another reason why I was drawn to this uh, Benu is because it has a number six size nib and it's not a Yubu nib it's a Schmidt nib so number six nibs this is not gonna work can be found on the uh, uh, Twisby VAC 700 what other I do have other pens with or another pen with a number 6 nib it's this um, Franklin Christoph model number 2 this is definitely a lot shorter I am going to weigh this pen just to see how much it weighs with cap and without. This is 27 grams and without the cap, which I actually think is a lot, is very heavy. And as you can see, it's 15 grams. So it's basically lighter than the other pens that I just recently shared with you, which makes, makes, sense doesn't make sense it's fine so i want to ink this pen up with a color that i th might think might go really well with this i feel like this color is the color of the sparkles in here the blue sparkles i unfortunately only have like nothing left in here so i don't think that i can fill this by submerging the pen in the ink and getting any uh, th 
thing sucked into the converter. So what I'm going to do is use my syringe and syringe fill this pen. Or actually the converter. Wow, this is going to go great. The I had purchased this ink from Goulet uh, a while ago. And to be 100% honest, I thought it was very, very light. So I am not sure if I I'm going to love this ink, but I really want to try it, give it one more try. And then see how it works for me. I mean, that's the last of this ink. And if it doesn't work, then you know, that's fine too. Am I really going to? Yeah, because I need to put some of it in the nib and feed otherwise, or prime the nib and feed. The way that I usually do this is I just uh, turn the converter until I can see the ink out here. Do we see it yet? Yeah, I can see it right here. Let's see if it works. I'm just gonna move this back here. And then I'm going to grab my trusty thing. And yes, today should be February 1st. Wow, there we go. And there was still some uh, wetness from the nib that I, from when I tested the nib for the very first time. So I'm just going to suck out some ink so that maybe it can be more clear. I so let me put here what what pen is this? This is did I ever say the model? This is the Bennu Euphoria. And the color is jazz. This is a fine nib. And the ink is Sailor Shikiori Yuki Akari. So let's see, downstrokes, side strokes, up strokes, very scratchy. I usually don't use my pen like this, but I really like uh, comparing the all the directions that this pen should write and then let's do some squiggly lines. And I have to say that I find this pen to be scratchy. It's not as, it's like, it feels like there's some edge right here. It's not as smooth as I had expected and hoped for when um, I was, like the way that Carrie raves about these pens, how smooth and amazing they are. It's definitely not a wow, the same wow factor that I, for instance, had from other pens that I inked up really nicely. So um, maybe I just need to check if there is some misalignment. I mean, not that I can see this without a loop. I will, I will get onto that. Um, did I say anything else? I will just leave it like that, inked like that, and see when I did wrote a page, how I like it, um, look at it with a loop more. Um, I love, love, love the design of this pen and I can't wait to, to get to know it better. I do have several new pens in my next currently inked rotation, so I'm, I'm really curious to see how long that will be how long that will last. I, I have the feeling that it's not just going to be for one single month. 
um, because I just want to get a really good feel for all of those new pens and how they write. Um, yeah. Do you have a Benno Euphoria or a Benno pen in general? What's your favorite model and how do you like these? What's the nib size that you prefer on those pens? Um, am I just one off that I'm not like super enthusiastic about this nib? Or is that something that maybe you experience as well? I'm like, some sometimes when I hear other people tell me how amazing a pen is and then mine is just normal or not as amazing as other pens i'm like is it just me maybe it's them maybe what is the problem here but yeah and this is supposed to be my birthday pen oh my god um yeah uh happy birthday to me i hope you <laughs> Uh, enjoyed this video i will definitely come back and let you know at the end of the month and at the end of my inking rotations how i enjoy this pen um, i will see you soon until then bye